Hi guys, I filmed the video already of giving you some tips and tricks, but there's one trick that I'm not sure if I told you about, but I've wanted to share this with you. And when I first learned it, I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> so I have some red wigglers here in a bin and I'm going to show you how to get them out the easy way. <laughs> so before I do this, let me take you on a little tour. So I'm resetting my uh, Red Wiggler bins. As you can see, they have different dates um, and I'm moving this way. So when I reset these bins, I don't do all of these in, an, in one day because then when it comes to harvesting in 21 to 27 days, I'm going to have to harvest all of them at the same time. And, you know, that could be time consuming. So I spread it out, you know, I spread it out. Um, and then once I get there, then I'm going to obviously move this way. And then I think this entire shelf, I'm just going to have cocoons because that I need to multiply them so that they could keep going that way. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Let me show you the, um, African nightcrawler bin, the play around bin nursery bin here. They're doing well. This is dry peat moss that I have sifted out of other bins, like that I'm going to set up like fresh peat moss and then the chunks, I just throw it in here. Um, but even though this looks dry, it's wet underneath and they're all down there. See, look at them. They're nice looking worms. This is a young one, but look how big he is already. Right? As you can see, look, this is all castings already. They're starting to devour it. So I'm gonna spray the top of this with water just to make sure that they're okay. And yeah, they are. It's moist down there. And this uh, watermelon thing, let me see. It's starting to feel moist on the edges. So let's move this aside a little bit. Ooh, <laughs> my finger sunk in here. Oh, yuck. So I see a lot of mites. Let me see. I wonder if they're in there or something is in there. Oh, gosh, this is so gross. Let me see. Oh, is that a cocoon? I think so. Yeah, it looks like an African nightcrawler cocoon. Look how different they look. This better be a cocoon. <laughs> so let's see the fleshy part. Ugh. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Oh, gosh. That's so gross. Anyway. I see young ones in here. They're not moving into this as fast as I thought they would. I guess like someone said in one of my videos, watermelon is acidic. But you know what? I have faith in them. So we're going to leave it there. And we're going to cover it. You know what's weird too? It doesn't smell like anything. I thought it would for sure. But no, it's not. They see they're all down here. Come on, guys. Go eat that melon. Wow, they're nice. Look at them. Wow. So let's cover them up again. Now this paper, I just got to spray it down. All right. This is coffee, by the way. You ever taste coffee that's like expired? And it does expire, cause man, it tastes funky. Oh, I hate it. So, let me go. All right. So this is a trick that I learned. Another worm farmer taught me this. So you see this, a lot of us do the brush method off the surface, you know, 
to get them. And then you have to wait for them to go down. Then you go like this and you have to wait for them to go down. So he told me to do this. He said, instead of waiting for them to go down, why don't you just stick your hand underneath like this, flip them over and grab what you want and then sift this out. And there you go. And I thought, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that sooner? That's genius. So basically you just go like this, stick underneath and you get like a pancake mass here. So look at this. So let me put some over here. So let's say I put them in here and I wanna sift them. I mean, look, clean worms. Sorry guys, let me put them back. So tell me that's not the best trick ever. <laughs> And I imagine if you do this on a large table, like um, like Samantha has from Mimi's, you could take um, one of those giant spatulas, like this thing, jump on me this thing. And basically you could just go like that on, this, on the table and, you know, flip it over and then grab them before they go down. And then as you're getting them ready, the next gang will go down. And then you just do it again. And it, it's like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that before? Isn't this great, guys, by the way? Joe got it for me for that reason, and I think it's an awesome tool. Now, don't ask me what this is for, because I have no idea. Maybe one of y'all know. Is this for plaster or for something like that? I don't know. I don't know where he finds these things. Well, he goes around, you know, Menards and Home Depot and all that, and but... You know, I'm not sure. But anyway, it comes in very handy and it's plastic and I can grip it pretty well. So, but tell me that's not the best trick instead of doing this the whole time. And I'm sure by the end you can do this, but this will save you some time. It really will. So, yeah, when he told me that, I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, <laughs> I wish I would have known that a long time ago. He's a, a worm farmer friend of mine from the West Coast. And he's been worm farming a long time. And he knows a lot of these little tips and tricks, you know, and he shares them with me, which uh, is very sweet. So I thought that you'd find that very interesting. And here I have the worm bin that I set up. Remember the red wiggler? And they're gonna go there. And then I'm just gonna keep going down the row. So yeah, I got this feed, this uh, dolomite lime to feed and the azomite minerals. Um, another breeder friend of mine says that it's good to give them minerals and I agree. Um, I still have the same supplies over here. You know, the cornmeal and this is um, chicken mash and the cricket stuff. Yeah, that makes them nice and fat, um, but I don't feed it every day. It's very high in protein, so you have to be careful. But every once in a while, I give them some, and, and they like it. So I hope you guys didn't like that little trick of mine. And, you know, it's very important after you work with your worms to wash your hands. You don't want to contaminate bin to bin or crossbreed them if you don't want to. Plus, if you have a cut on your hands, I mean, it is worm poop. It has bacteria. You want to just wash your hands. And I also clean my surface here when I'm done for the day because if I come in here to do something else, like I don't want to carry a cocoon with me. Because they're so little, guys, that, you know, you don't know. It could happen. And if it does, it does. I mean, what am I going to do, you know? But so far, so good for me. But yeah, make sure you wash your hands. So I hope you enjoyed that little trick. Subscribe and like and, you know, watch the videos. If you're interested in worms, go to the my website, thegardenandwormlady.com. And I will hook you up with worms. We're only shipping worms out on Mondays and Tuesdays now. I just can't go to the post office every day to ship anything out. Now, products, I ship out a little more often because I'm able to leave them 
and my pulse lady will come and pick them up but i won't leave live worms outside i just i won't i know people that do that and i'm like oh my gosh how can you take that chance um i won't i'm terrified something will happen to them we have a lot of wild animals here i mean a cat could come up and get them or who knows you know so anyway guys i hope you enjoy this video and uh I'll see you all next time.